Hey, 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 time for another out of this world story from our space. My male 23 wife, female 21, did it with two other people behind my back. So context, I married her back in November of 2020. And for a good while, we've been on a rocky path to find stability in her both our lives. We have different backgrounds and understand our differences and how we decide our choices and whatnot. So the story goes like this. A few months after our marriage, we decided to host a small party with my two work friends in February. Got a few drinks and a drinking game where we took shots for a swig of whatever alcohol we had. Con to the point where we were extremely intoxicated and told my friends to stay over because I didn't want them getting a DUI. Me, as a lightweight, decided enough was enough and stumbled to my room to get some rest. But after going to my room, I did wake up maybe once or twice, hazy mind that can't remember crap to an extent, to tell my wife to come back in, since she wasn't next to me. I honestly wish I didn't because my wife was right there with two of my co-workers doing it. She stopped, got up, and got me back to bed. I didn't know what to do, and I swore it was some horrible nightmare because of the alcohol, and I really didn't want to replay that image at all. I woke up the next morning and saw that she was next to me sleeping. I quietly woke her up and asked her what she'd been doing late last night. She said she was getting ready for bed last night while putting me back to sleep and stay with me. I even asked her if she did it with my friends and she said no and denied all of it. I even asked them as well and none of them remembered. For like the longest time till recently, I had to convince myself that it was just a terrible nightmare. I was just overthinking of what could happen. Told myself drinking is some type of poison and will not do it again forever. I tried my hardest to just forget about it and every waking day it's been hurting since something so vivid like that would haunt me for months. Before I knew the tea, I had a field training exercise, military, for roughly four weeks at a remote area. I had two friends, male 24 and female 22, who recently got married and I told them to stay over at my place till they got their own place. Literally two weeks in, I've been told countless stories of what my wife was saying behind my back and the things she did behind my back. My buddy also said that she mentioned to his wife about the threesome with my friends, told her to not spill the beans. Me, all out in BFE, got into a state of anxiety, mild depression, medics are tracking, had lack of motivation, and just wanted to end it. Not the right thing to do, but good God, what the hell was I supposed to do? Just be calm that my wife lied about doing it? I decided to be extremely distant with her for the remainder of my time working remotely and said screw it, get the divorce papers ready. Had it completed, and when I returned back home, I confronted her with my two friends, the married couple, about the situation. To shorten that story, she wanted to tell me that she did a mistake and lied about it, the back talking wasn't hurtful, and the other things mentioned by the couple wasn't real. I honestly don't know what to trust or who to trust. It's July 15th, when I confronted her was back a month and a half ago. We still live together. There were several times when I heavily decided enough was enough. But she keeps down talking about how she wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for me. Which kept guilt tripping the hell out of me. I honestly don't know if I want this anymore. My trust is broken because of it and she keeps guilt tripping me about it. What do I do? Let's check in with the community for some advice. Mm, 172 says, Dude, if the only reason you're sticking around is because you're afraid she'll try to kill herself otherwise, that's all the more reason to leave. You've been married less than a year, and she's already cheated on you, gaslit you about it, and this very much fits the definition of gaslighting, given that you're no longer sure you can trust your gut when it comes to the truth. Bat mouths you behind your back, and then tried to claim you shouldn't be bothered by the stuff she can't just lie away. The nicest thing anyone can say about her conduct is that she's not stable enough to be in a relationship with anyone, let alone a marriage. Sir, the papers... Get her out of your life and get to therapy so you can remind yourself what you're entitled to expect from a partner. If she tries to do something drastic, call in a wellness check or someone else who can get her the professional help she needs and let them handle it. Karnak has another comment. You know exactly what you have to do. You just hesitate to take the next step. Take two steps at once. Look for a new apartment first and once you got it, serve her the divorce papers and leave her. And please get tested for STDs. She made her decision to cheat and lie to you. If you stay with her, then the rest of your life will look exactly like that. Do you want that? Okay, 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 1511 says, She cheated and you saw it with your very own eyes. Then she gaslit you having you convinced that it was just all a dream. The answer is to divorce. I knew, could tell before I even got to it, that you were in the military. If you do have to be away for some time, she will do it again. I'm not saying this is what you did, or what you'll do in the future. 
But please do not marry for the sake of benefits or under the guise of fake love. Marrying you for your benefits. I met this military man, who racked up two going on three divorces, and he was only 25. On to the next story. My girlfriend, woman 24, left me, male 22, after nearly eight years with one phone call and an instantly has someone new. I got with my girlfriend together when I was 14 and she's 16. We had some rough times in the relationship. I also have my fair share of mess ups. And I am honest to say that when I was 14, 15, I shared some pictures with another girl. There was no excuse for that and under no circumstances you should do that. I told her later about it and she said that it was okay because I told her and she also did some mistakes. After that, Two years into the relationship, she got pregnant, accidentally, and the baby died before it was born. That was very hard for us. My girlfriend also has chronic depression, and this had her harder than me because of that, I assume. Shortly after that, she got kicked out of her home by her father, who also hit her as a kid. So she lived with me and my parents for about three or four years. In that time, I tried my best to cheer her up and to make her live better. And this is what I tried to do till our breakup three weeks ago. My whole live task became to make her happy, to improve myself so I could provide for both of us, so she could focus on getting better. I now know this was some really dumb crap, but I only came to this conclusion now. So, in 2020, I got back into high school and we moved together into a nice, small, two-room flat. I want to go study later, so that was the best choice for me. Before that, I worked some low-wage jobs and I thought to myself that I wanted more in life. I also got her into the school so she has something to do over the day and does not get stuck in bad thoughts. After school, I also worked on a side business, three or four hours a day, and I did most of the daily house stuff like cleaning because school was everything she could handle. And I was not angry about that because she had a really bad depression and was still not over the loss of our child. I think you could never get over such a thing because I am still sad to this day. On top of all that, school side business and a daily house routine I tried to help her get through school because it was pretty easy for me and I wanted to help her. She always didn't want to learn because she was too depressed and I said, okay, it's fine to just take care of your grades. I think I was way too nice to her to be honest. In addition to all of this, I struggled myself a lot because I have an anxiety and panic disorder which was pretty bad at the time I got into high school again. But I got some professional help and they told me I need to do an autism test. Because the panic and anxiety disorder that I have no problems in school and other stuff led them to believe that I might be autistic. My doctor's appointment in a special clinic for that is in the future, and I'm a bit nervous about that. So I think I also had a lot of stuff to deal with, but I always thought that if I am strong enough to also help her, she might get better. I was wrong. After half a year, her depression got even worse than before, and I told her that she needed professional help. So I called the clinic with her, as she went to that clinic to get back on her feet again. As she was in the clinic, I managed everything alone her mails, bringing her clothes and all that stuff, but I was never able to visit her because of COVID, which was really hard for me. I loved this woman, like really a lot, and every day I loved her more. So I made sure her stay in the hospital was as easy for her as it could get. But then, two weeks after she went into that clinic, she called me up and told me that she wants space. She wants to move out of our flat, and she wants to break up. I asked her why, and she told me that she needed to take care of her alone. She notices now how much I do for her and that she knows now that she needs to get her crap together on her own. I was devastated, but I understand what she told me. I said, okay, it's fine. I understand you. Hung up and cried for two days straight. She told me she loves me and that we can get back together when she manages to live on her own. As I said, I was sad, but I understood what she meant. So I gave her space. After another two or three weeks, she finally got home and I was really happy to see her again. But as she entered our flat, another dude was with her. I asked her who that was, and she told me that he is from the same clinic and just helped her with all her stuff to get it home because it was so much. I stood there in some shock and thought to myself, she could have asked me. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt and was nice to this dude and talked a bit with him. But I noticed, or better I felt, there was something off. The way she talked to him and he talked to her and stuff like that. I told her if there was something she should tell me. She said there was nothing between them and left some stuff. One week later, I asked her again and she said, We are not together anymore, that is none of your business. I was angry and pressured her till she admitted that she had some interest in him. My world broke into pieces. I was hurting and my panic attacks that became rare were back at its fullest. I told her I wanted to speak with her about this and how this happened, as she said she would be there the next day. I wanted to know what was going on. 
The next day came as she stood there. With the dude. I told her that I wanted to talk to her alone, and she just said that this is also her flat, and she can't be rude to a guest. So the dude is sitting in the next room, when I asked her about it, and we talked. She says she still loves me, but she can't be with me because I am too much for her. She needed to do so much things for me, and I always remember her on the loss of her child. Yes, she said her, and not our. I couldn't help myself but just start to cry in that moment. I was stunned on how selfish she was. She keep me crap about how I felt. She told me that this was not the case, but her actions told me that. I mean, what the F? She brings her new dude with whom she cheated in the clinic to this talk? I should have told her to just leave, but I wanted answers. I loved her so much. She said that the new guy was not the reason for the breakup, but this is all some BS. She tells me she wants to be alone and to get her life together on her own, and then has another dude? I told her how I felt, and I noticed that she did not care. Not really. As she was going to leave, I asked her if she could move her stuff out of the flat because it was too much for me to see her things all day and get reminded of all this. She just told me she does that when she can and that she is now going because she is flying into a holiday with her new dude. I told her that that was unfair because she decided to make a cut. She just left and leaves her crap behind, so I packed her stuff into boxes and put them away. As she heard that I was doing that, she told me that she doesn't want me to do that because this is her property and I have no right to touch it. And if I continue doing that, she will sue me for theft or some stuff. I am just shot. I wanted a kiss with her. I planned my whole future with her. I worked every day so she could have a nice home. I made her happy. Listened. And she just leaves like that. She also told me that she just met him after the breakup, but I found some texts that she is seeing this dude a bit longer. While we were still together. There is a high possibility that I did not mention everything because I can't think straight. It is too much for me. Every night I wake up with a bad panic attack. And over the day, I don't want to do anything. I already contacted the clinic, but they said they are full. Until I did not try to kill myself, I needed to wait. I also contacted some psychologists, but got no answer that could help me yet. So I need to get over that pile of crap myself, but I don't know how. It hurts so much, and I also had some thoughts about suicide. It is so hard because I just can't unlove her. But I also know that I don't want her back. I just don't understand. I don't know what I should do. What should I think about that? What did I do wrong? Was I nice to her? I feel like crap, and I don't know what to do. The sad truth is that she was my only friend. I feel like I can never trust someone again or love someone the same way I did or do. I feel worthless. Like the two choices are someone that was okay for the time being. So you guys have some advice for me? I feel like the pain never ends, like I'm never going to be happy again. Am I a bad person? That I miss something? I question myself every day what I did or what I am doing wrong. Am I such a bad person? She may be right and I just don't notice that I am no narcissist. Thank you for listening or reading.